Hello folks, hope you're doing well, hope your evening is going well. Mine is alright, we got some new internet installed and it seems very, very, very quick. So there will be more streams coming your way. I have a bit of personal news to go through first, and the first part of that is, is that I'll get the bad news out the way first. Um, Grandad North, um, who I was living with for a while, when I, when I started this channel, he is in hospital. Um, it's not looking great. Uh, he is uh, in there getting some blood work done and I'm going to see how things go but keep them in your, in your heart and your minds if you could do that would be great uh, uh, better news though is that we have a new channel on the horizon called Northern Exile Gaming now do not worry this channel Northern Exile will be remaining exactly the same and all the videos five to six a week will be appearing as normal on this channel it's just when I do streaming and when I want to talk about video games, I'll be moving that over to the Northern Exile Gaming channel. Why? Well, I don't want to dilute our good hobby time that we have here with, you know, off-topic talking about Mass Effect and Dragon Age and all this other stuff. Do you know what I mean? So that'll be on that channel over there. And uh, it's it's there. You can you can subscribe to it right now. It's it's right over there, uh, the, the, the Northern Exile Gaming channel. That is where I'll be doing most of my streams with my lovely new internet and things like that. We'll be doing Cyberpunk over the summer. We'll be doing uh, Space Marine 2 when it launches. Lots of fun stuff going to go on. And I really want to get a Dawn of War tournament going as well from the people in the Discord. That'd be pretty cool. But anyway, that'll be over there. And this channel will be about Hobby Nightmares and 40k Rants, which is what we're going to be doing right now with Beans. And Beans says, Good day, North. You can call me Beans. I've been watching your channel since the first Games Workshop video, which seems not too long ago. And over the years, I've been wanting to send this story in, but honestly, I never got around to it, as life got more busy and time shortened. No problem, man. Now, I have some free time. I'd like to bring you back to a simpler time, the middle slash end of 5th edition back in 2011. I wanted to detail this story to yourself and the community, because this story is about a Games Workshop manager and one of his lucky sidekicks who eventually got their comeuppance through what I can only describe as golden justice. Okay, alright. Even though some hobby communities may have their issues, the point I want to get across is that even these are nightmares, uh, there is a lot you can learn from them. Especially if you were an awkward young lad with no friends, no charisma, and had no idea how to deal with idiots. There is a lesson you can learn from every hobby nightmare and mine goes over the period of nearly 10 years to the present day. Even though I had gone through these nightmares, I am extremely thankful for it as it gave me the tools and base foundation I needed to become the man I am today. Uh, dude, my, my mother would agree with you. She thinks in the same way. Everything happens for a reason, if you know what I mean. Um, yeah, anyway. This story takes place in the land of maple syrup when I was a young man. 12 at the time, when I got into 40k. That's Canada, for those of you who, don't, who aren't following along. My first purchase was, of course, the Black Reach starter set. For those who don't remember, it was the Ultramarines and Orc starter set. The one with those sweet death copters and 30 boys. The one you and your boys bought five times each to start an Orc army. Even at that time, it was insanely cheap at around $50 Canadian market price for a box. The summer before I'd started my first ever job. I was a general labourer working for my cousin's landscaping company, making 12 bucks an hour and usually working 9 to 12 hour days. While the hours were tough and the days were long, I had a significant amount of disposable cash to spend on Warhammer. Okay. Alright, fair enough. You could say at the time I was a whale in the hobby and our local manager loved me for it. Don't get me wrong though. His usual nonsense did not change due to my normal weekly purchases. If there's one thing you could say, at least, he, he was a really bad person to most everybody equally. Take a sip of tea now before we get into the real meat and potatoes. I'd stepped into my local games workshop one afternoon on a, on a Saturday in the May of 2011 for the first time ever. My mum had dropped me off that day and I still remember it vividly and still have my first ever Space Marines I painted up at the store. I thought it was wonderful, and the store at the time had a massive community. Every Saturday, I remember the store was packed with folks building, playing, painting, and just an all-round great place to spend a Saturday. 
Every Saturday, after a hard week of work during the summer months I'd been spent at the local games workshop, beefing up my ultramarine army or playing a game against one of the local regulars, and eventually meeting my good hobby group who I'm still friends with to this day. Although it was for the most part a great place aside from the, you know, normal, you know, not very good hobbyist behaviour of the manager, our store also had its clique of that guys. Overweight neckbeards, power gaming, weirdos and general idiots. Although this will be a, will be a long one, there is a few years of build up to the eventual apocalypse, okay? The manager whose name I am changing but is named Dave for the purpose of the story, as it uh, at first was an alright fellow. But he was nice in some respects, his general demeanour and attitude towards you, as not only a customer but as an individual, was generally quite rude, obnoxious, and sometimes even hostile for no apparent reason. A key example I remember uh, was of one of my buddies whose name is Jeff, bringing an old squat mini into the shop to show us when Dave saw it, he almost gave Wow, really? He almost gave him a ban and said it wasn't a legal model and that Squatch would never be released by Games Workshop again, so he had to remove it from the store. And lo and behold, you know, we now have Leagues of Atan, but that's neither here nor there, I agree. I mean ugh. Most of the managers I know, man, would be like, Oh my god, that's such a cool model. Thank you for bringing it in and having it in my store, right? There's always one, or more than one. Another example was me purchasing a Bane Blade for one of our group members for their birthdays and presenting it to him in the store. Dave got upset and gave us a lecture for 10 minutes about how he could get canned if this was reported to Games Workshop HQ. My reaction to this was keeping a stern face even as a 12 year old and just allowing him to putter his nonsense. Wh why is he saying that? The only reason he might get canned is if he's given you his discount to buy it on. Right? Uh, but even then, you can literally give that away as a gift and it'd be fine. Do you know what I mean? Um, I don't know, man. It, 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 it's just... There's no way he'd get canned if you bought a gift to somebody and gave it to them in the store. It just... That would never happen. Right? There's... This guy's just weird. Are you sure he didn't give you his store discount to buy it on? And then you gave it to your friend? Because then, yeah, that, that's a sackable offence. You know? Uh, anyway. The worst experience, however, was his reaction to both my grandmother's qu uh, question when they came in to buy me a Christmas present. My grandmothers are amazing Italian grandmothers. Those listening to this, who are fellow Italians, you know exactly what I mean. Always they are there to back you up even when you're in the wrong never doubting you, and always having a meal ready on the best and worst days. Dude, my grandmother was like that. Yeah, my grandmother was like that. She couldn't cook. God bless her, she couldn't cook. Right? And she tried. She tried. Right? She tried. Um... <laughs> She'd always be like, you cheeky bugger. You know, whenever I was like, oh, that's, that's, that's lovely, Nan. Oh, you know. Um, she did try, though. And she, she would always... That one bit, though, there, where she always backed you up whenever. Yeah, that was me. Like, my, my grandma and I were very, very, very close. Very close. Um, anyway. They practically raised me and all the people who helped me develop my love for the hobby. And every day when they talked, they had long conversations about what I was doing and what I was working on and how proud they were of the hard work I was doing on my little blue Smurfs. <laughs> Dude, you're... Um... Your grandmother's a beast if they said that and they literally refer to them like, yeah, I like those little blue smurfs. Dave, in his infinite charisma and wisdom, decided to say to my grandmothers after inquiring about another hobby shop that was carrying that year's Space Marine Megaforce after it was sold out in stores, that if they wanted to support another competitor and assist the shop in closing, that they, that they and I could catch a ban for simply talking about that in his store. Now, my grandmothers are sweet old ladies, but I promise you now, those two gals lived through, um, you know, hard right Italy in the 1940s, and were not about to take any nonsense from this dumpy looking Oswald Mosley at the local games workshop. Okay. After hearing him say that one of my grandmothers turned to the other and both looked at each other and then back at Dave, they then replied in Italian that Dave 
Could go. <laughs> Could go F U C K a donkey's ass. We then left the store, and although this happened, my grandmothers both took me to the local friendly gaming store to buy two Mega Forces for Christmas. It was by far one of the greatest Christmas presents I remember, and I still have the boxes on my shelves. You may want to take a sip of tea now, North, as this is where it gets interesting. Now, it's, all, it's been interesting all the way through, man. It's been great. Now, over this course of time, the local uh, that guy, Cliche, or, or Cliche, or Cleek, Alright. Uh, now, over the course of that time, the local that guy uh, clique within the store, who were the usual store manager lick asses, had constantly played their bullshit with our group. However, one such individual, Clive, was a key culprit in the usual Saturday madhouse. Clive was a skinny fellow with an unkempt beard and a general attitude of looking down at you due to your paint job. He once came to me and said, Heh. Ultramarines? Not only did you pick the worst chapter, but they're like painted like shit as well. Do you like to waste your money this much? Yeah, just an all around dick. Whenever Clive wasn't licking the store manager's ass, he was usually with his group at the painting table talking their usual nonsense. This day in particular was the day of the actual apocalypse that happened. It was around 2014 when, said, uh, when Apocalypse re released in store and my god what a great day that was if anybody remembers the cultist set of nearly 100 cultists for 150 dollars i came in to order a couple of those to build my cultist chaos legion the boys and myself were all doing our thing and participating in the apocalypse game back when games could be had in stores of course during this time we had a local regular who was a young lad who was at least 10 years old let's call him johnny Johnny was a very quiet, but very nice, kind kid. I had played a couple of games against him before, and he played Blood Angels, and was pretty good at the game, had a great attitude, and was all around an awesome opponent. This day in particular, one of our group members was meeting another group in the parking lot to buy his orc army from him. I swear to god, it looked like a drug deal between a bunch of 13 to 16 year old kids, except it was even worse. They were dealing in plastic crack. Clive spotted us as he walked to the, one of the local restaurants for lunch. When we had all gotten back from lunch, he had told Dave about the exchange to which we had all gotten a stern talking to in store, even though we had each dropped around $1,000 that day for apocalypse purchases for our already huge store-bought armies. Dude, this guy's a piece of work. A real piece of work. After the lecture was over, my buddy went to take a quick uh, piss. To his horror... The entire bathroom was covered in pee, like somebody had just pulled their pants down and danced whilst pissing all over the place. He came back to tell us, and Johnny had been talking with us. When my, bo when my buddy said this, his face immediately turned white, and he called his parents to come pick him up. We said to him, Hey dude, you're leaving already? It's only 3pm. He said, Yeah, sorry guys, uh, we've got to go to my aunt's for dinner. He grabbed all of his stuff and left. Five minutes later, Dave came out and said, Ahem, everybody. I don't know who can't control themselves while they go to the bathroom, but now I have to clean it up. The bathroom will be off limits forever now. This led to an awkward silence in which me and my buddy Jeff had said, Ah, geez, Clive, did we have a little accident today? To which the store of around 30 people burst out into laughter. Dave and Clive <laughs> had an angry look and went to go clean the golden nightmare. A few weeks later, Dave left the shop for another games workshop in another city about an hour away. Our shop went through multiple managers and the ne over the next few years, but each was better than the last. Over time, with Games Workshop's constant um, screwery, we decided supporting Games Workshop directly was not the wisest idea, and now play at our local gaming store and gaming lounges in our area with vast 3D printed armies, eBay armies, or even recasts. We never saw Johnny after that day, and I hope he is doing well in life. Clive still hangs around the local hobby scene, and we see him from time to time, but he never really interacts with us at all. Even after all these years, I hope he is doing well and found peace in himself. Well, that's good, man. That's good. That's good. That, that's when you know... Um, that's when you know that, you know, you're in, you're in a positive place. You know what I mean? 
Let me send a quick message to uh, to my missus downstairs. Um, oh, never mind. Uh, that's when you know when you're at peace within yourself. When, when you can actually wish the best for somebody else. I say that the same thing to guys who are trying to get over a relationship too. And that you know you're you're over them when you wish the best for them. When you're at that stage, you know you know you're over it. You're fine. You know what I mean. Anyways, North. As for me, during this time, I still played in the hobby through multiple jobs and life-changing events like joining the army reserves at 16, university, my first ever job as a banker, and now my new career as a mortgage broker. And my relationship with my lovely girlfriend, who is a staunch Sisters of Battle player who also fancies the Thousand Sons. I honestly don't think I could have ever have made it this far without the hobby and becoming a blooming social butterfly due to the many stories laid out here. As I said before, hobby nightmares do occur, but there is a lot you can learn from them uh, to apply to the greater game of life. For those listening, as well, always be sure of yourself and have confidence. Life is full of bullshit, but always remember, if a man knows not which port he sails, no wind is favourable. Have a great day, North. Wish the best for yourself and your family, and hope everything is going well. Beans. Cheers, man. What a lovely story. How lovely was that? Absolutely brilliant. Alrighty. Next up, we have Luxurious Stipend. <laughs> Alright. Do you have a, a stipend? Is it luxurious? Who knows? Who knows? Anyway, let's go back to here. Uh, Hi, North. I hope you're having a good day. I thought I'd write in to finally share with you my own hobby nightmare. I am an ex Kings Workshop staffer who became ma a manager later on in my career there. I will be honest with you, mate. I loved most of my time at the company. Also, the canteen food at HQ was top-notch, and I ended up working at Lenton for a summer to cover some folks who were off. It was a great place to work, but I have to bring to you a hobby nightmare that has to do with the general attitude of the folks over there that came out and rubbed me the wrong way. In a few words, this hobby nightmare is about the contempt that a lot of people within Games Workshop seem to have towards their audience. What prompted me to write this hobby nightmare was the video you did about Games Workshop managers not actually liking their audience a few weeks ago. I have to say, and there will be several examples here, but that really does hold true. The amount of moaning about the general hobbyist was good-natured at first. In fact, it was a key support network, at least for me. It was awesome if I had a bad few days with a few customers, which would happen once every few weeks, and I was able to commiserate with other managers and staff members. One manager, Mike, who was out for a pint with me and a few other managers, said to me, of this subject, and I quote, Don't worry about the plebs, mate. They keep spending, and you know that if they are toxic and taking up your time, you just don't want them in the store anyway, right? So they may as well not be there. Just ban them. Unquote. Well, as Mike stood there, pint in hand, waxing lyrical about the annoying habits of the hobby base, it was the first time I thought to myself... Do we actually respect our customer base, like, at all? There was another manager called Karen, a decent lass, who ran a store nearby that I actually went on a date with once, but things didn't really work out that way, and we decided to just be good mates. Anyway, she ended up thinking that a few of her regulars were alright, but she was being invaded by overly competitive and obsessive gamers who really started to take the atmosphere down a notch. I went to visit her on a Tuesday, to find her sitting at the back of her store, looking miserable, and then I looked over to the gaming table, where four really dour, smelly gentlemen, wearing black leather at the height of summer, were arguing about the most recent FAQ of the rules. And I quote, I really fucking hate this, but I can't just kick them out, she seethes to me quietly. In fact, two of her nicer regulars came in, made some small talk with Karen, bought a white dwarf, and then bolted from the store. Those two usually buy a box of models each. Those guys at the gaming table, they literally drive other customers away, she whispered, pointing to the gesticulating gamers at the gaming table. When we went for a coffee after work, she resolved to get rid of her gaming tables completely, and she did so, fielding a few complaints to HQ about her decision, and HQ calling her up, telling her to put the tables back, despite the official line from Lenton being that, game, that the game shouldn't be played in store. 
ask a question, get four different answers from four different people at HQ, I suppose. Dude, that's ridiculous. So you don't want me to play games in store, but you want me to have gaming tables. Why? Why? It's like they want her to have a bad time at work. The nightmare comes towards my, the end of my time at Games Workshop and actually comes from a retail workshop. I'll leave you to remind people what those are. Yeah, um, those are get-togethers. So, basically, in the UK, every store manager gets together in um, Nottingham at a swanky hotel. And we, we play Warhammer and talk about the hobby and what we're going to do. We do loads of training and presentations and, and stuff like that, right? Okay. Uh, we are in a nice hotel, and the first evening when everybody got there went quite well. We even got a free box of Space Marines in our room, which was awesome. I got a free bottle of Peroni in my welcome pack, which was also cool. We rarely got free stuff, but there you go. I was impressed. On Saturday afternoon, we had a meeting slash training session in one of the hotel conference rooms. It was several managers, two trainers, and the head of retail all sitting... Um, just, just talk to my mum there, sorry, that's me, not you. Um, it, it was several managers, two trainers, and the head of retail all sitting around a desk like it was some kind of war room. We were discussing how to advertise one of the new products that had Gilliman at its centre, which was fair enough. We were discussing how customers are going to react to the new release when one of the managers folds his arms, leans back in his chair, and says, It doesn't really matter, does it? They'll buy it anyway. Well, uh, the peasants won't, says another manager. I'm thinking his name is Andy or something. I look over to the I look over to the head of retail, who is looking rather stern, and I'm thinking, finally, the head of retail, our boss, is going to quash this talk. And he says, and I quote, "I think you're giving them too much credit, Andy. But you know, moving on." Jesus, <laughs> wow. It's not often my are my breath's taken away. There you go. Um, if you want to know what they think here, folks, there you go. Black and white. Um, I was a little shocked and just shook my head, scoffing as I did so. I just couldn't hold it in. Uh, is there a problem? The head of retail looked at me sternly. I, um... I stammered. I, I, uh... I just think that's a bit disrespectful and unhelpful, I said. I knew I'd fucked up. There was a nasty quiet that settled across the room before the head of retail chuckled after looking at me sternly and said, Well, I'm sorry if we offended you. <laughs> Shall we move on? There were, there were a few awkward chuckles and we did indeed move on. The thing was, nothing was ever the same again and yes, I did leave the company a few months later. The phone call started asking me to explain. Sorry, the phone call started at my store, asking me to explain why I uh, why I had emailed people at HQ with a certain tone, quote unquote. These emails were totally normal and not bad in any way. They were literally me looking to find out if anybody had any havocs in stock in the Nottingham area, and if there were any at HQ, could I request them? That was it. Still, apparently. I was completely out of order in the tone of my emails. I wish I had them to show you on hand. They were totally polite and respectful, and I did keep them, but I've lost them since. If you're wondering why I kept them, I wanted them for a tribunal in case they tried to sack me. I then had to do a stock check out of nowhere, as HQ demanded to know my stock levels to check if things had gone missing. This is despite me being a manager in very good standing, whose store was in constant growth, and had never had any problems or complaints before. Dude, this is... This is, a. Uh, it's like a machine's after you. Do you know what I mean? It's like the, like a, a big old monster is after you. Like, like you know, the, the big corporation. The, the, the spotlight has found you, do you know what I mean? And now it's after you. This is an all-day job to do a stock check, and so I closed the store on a Friday for me to come in and do the stock check. I was away with my son and daughter on Monday and Tuesday when we were usually off, so I couldn't do the stock check then. They called me, HQ, to demand to know why the store was closed on a Friday when I had already told them and logged into the system that it would be, and why. 
when I explained I would be away on the Monday and Tuesday, I was told that I was showing an alarming lack of commitment to the growth of my store. I went home and wrote up my notice and handed it in. For the last two months of my notice period, they left me completely alone and I did events and tournaments at the store that saw us turn a tidy profit. Dude, do you know why they left you alone? They got rid of you. It's mission accomplished. They got rid of you. Right? It's mission accomplished. That's why. <laughs> That's why they left you alone. Alright? Um, I had a really good time, and by the time my notice was up, and I handed over the keys, I did so with a nice gentleman from HQ, and walked to my car knowing that I had a university course in, comp in comp engineering, that's computer engineering, right, waiting for me. It was the best decision I ever made, but I do really miss the good old days of uh, 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 a lot with Games Workshop, at least until that last few couple of months. Anyway, thanks for providing a space for me and the other managers to have a bit of a vent. It's good to speak to you. Love you a long time. Cheers. All right, uh, no worries. Um, I'm telling you now, man, the reason why they stopped all of a sudden is that, is that you were gone. They'd gotten rid of you. Like, it, it, as I just said, mission accomplished. They don't need to do anything anymore. They're done. Do you know what I mean? Um, your card was marked, my friend. And when your card is marked, it's only a matter of time. As soon as somebody at HQ decides you're not for them, as soon as somebody at, at Lenton, somebody in, in, in Nottingham decides, yeah, I don't like that guy. If they've got any modicum of power, your days are numbered. You're gone. They will find that they will find a way to usher you out the nearest door. Do you know what I mean? Um, the complaints will start. The the random phone calls will start. You might even get phone calls from other managers in the company. You know what I mean? Like 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 critiquing how you're doing in your store for no reason. And you know those managers are brown noses. You know those managers are well in with management, like upper management. Do you know what I mean? Happened to me. It's not nice. It's not nice. Um, I'm really glad you got out of there and turned your life around, though. That's awesome. And I think both ways there, um, you, you've, you've said, look, it's an amazing place to work, which it is. Which it is. But, my God, dude. Like, you got out of there just at the right time. You didn't let it stress you out. You, 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 you put your big boy pants on. You handed in your notice and you turned your life around somewhere else. That's the thing to do, man. That's the thing to do. Sometimes it's worth going a month or two without pay to figure out something else to do. You know, it ain't it ain't worth. If you can afford to do it, if you're in a job that makes you miserable and you can afford to do it for a month or two, dude, quit. Take a week or two to de-stress, decompress, do what you want to do, and then reassess, readjust, and figure out what you want to do with your life and chase that thing, right? chase that thing anyway, I love you a long time I'll speak to you tomorrow for some more hobby nightmares you are a wonderful bunch of people and I wish you all the best um, stay with me, I'll be here tomorrow All right. I love you a long time, see you then have a good one, bye now